Yes, Mr. Chairman, thank you. And I'm going to briefly present this amendment and then withdraw it uh, in light of the fact that it's not directly germane to this bill and in light of uh, a hearing before the committee that I think is going to be announced today, which I really appreciate. Um, but, Mr. Chairman, this is a critical issue, and I wanted to take just a moment to call attention to it. Last year, we passed a long-term reauthorization of the National Flood Insurance Program, and that was important and positive because it had been just moving forward by fits and starts and actually expired several times, causing massive disruption to the real estate market. And so, in general, it was positive to pass that reauthorization. And that reauthorization contained many reforms which we supported. However, uh, now that it's in law and beginning to be implemented, there is a very real threat of not just rate increases, which everyone was prepared for in many areas, but completely catastrophic, completely unaffordable rate increases in some cases. I'll give you a specific example. Bill Bubrig, he's a resident of Plaquemines Parish, Plaquemines Parish in southeast Louisiana. Uh, he's been paying about $633 a year for flood insurance. I'm sure that's too low, and he was prepared for reforms and increases. Now his agents and FEMA are talking about an increase that could move him to almost $29,000 a year which is completely unaffordable, which would literally cause him to walk away from his home and, by definition, exit the program. Uh, we can't let that happen for two reasons. First of all, uh, because it's not right to treat anybody that way who have lived by all the rules that have been in place at the time, who have built to all the elevations that were current at the time, to literally force them out of their homes and take away their slice of the American dream. Secondly, it will get in the way of making the flood insurance program sustainable, because if you have any significant number of people exiting the system not paying premiums, we're never going to get to a fiscally sustainable place. So we need to look at this uh, quickly and fix this, and it is an issue not just in Louisiana, but in various communities around the country. It's very significant. I was in one of those communities recently, obviously in my case in Louisiana, and I was presented with this box of home keys and asked to hand these to FEMA, which I'll do later today. And they literally are home keys from hundreds, thousands of residents who fear having to turn those keys into the bank, to FEMA, to the flood insurance program because not just of rate increases, which everyone was prepared for, but for because of completely unaffordable increases in their cases um, after they have lived by all the rules they have been asked to live by. And so we need to address this. I would also point out there was a big step forward made yesterday in the House by the conservative House, a big vote on the floor, very bipartisan to postpone these unaffordable increases while we get it right, while FEMA gets it right. And I'd point out that FEMA, under our extension of the National Flood Insurance Program, has an affordability report due, overdue, which is not yet produced and which they are not producing. That's in the reauthorization. They need to do that, and they need to get right their so-called LAMP program so that they properly map areas, including all of the flood protection in areas that communities should be given credit for. So, Mr. Chairman, thank you and thanks to the authors of the bill uh, for allowing me to underscore this serious concern. I'll withdraw the amendment, and I also appreciate the uh, important hearing that I think we're going to have in the committee.